Hey friends, welcome back. It's Mike here at the Metabolic Health Summit. We are with Dr. Ilana Gross. Thanks so much for hopping on. I made pop-ups here. That was why my hand was there. So let's show your badge so people can see your name if they want to Google. That's better than the drink. Cultures. That is better. It's backwards. So uh, you do a lot of research with, with whether it comes to nutritional ketosis affecting migraines and headaches. Is that right? Yeah, that's that's right. Especially migraines. And what's in short, how does a migraine happen and then how does a metabolic therapy like the ketogenic diet, how does that affect that? So if you try and figure out what is causing a disease, it's always good to look at trigger factors. So with migraines, if you look at migraine trigger factors, you can basically relate every single trigger factor with increases in oxidative stress. Mm. Oxidative stress is then inhibiting mitochondria, mitochondrial function in general, and hence ATP production. So ATP is the energy currency of the body, so basically how much energy you make. So there's more and more evidence actually coming up to suggest that migraines are an energy deficit syndrome of the brain. Wow. And if you think about it from an evolutionary perspective, too much oxidative stress around is very harmful for it damages DNA, it damages a lot of proteins, and also an energy deficit in the brain could potentially be lethal or have very detrimental effects. So it kind of makes sense that something that is so harmful to the organism elicits our most painful pain pathways or warning systems. Right. So maybe migraines are actually not a disease, but a warning system of the body, a useful warning system that alerts us that something is going on that is wrong. Now, typically we say that in a chronic disease like a chronic migraine, the pain has lost its warning function, but I think that it probably hasn't, and migraines could be an adaptive response of the brain to an energy deficit that could be detrimental to the organism. So, so why can we now solve this problem using a ketogenic or metabolic approach if you get rid of the initial trigger, which is an energy deficit or increased oxidative stress, and that you can do with a variety of different metabolic approaches, if the trigger isn't there and the energy deficit doesn't occur in the first place, then the brain has no need to turn on its alarm systems and the pain doesn't occur. So um, we have data to suggest that if you're in nutritional ketosis, migraines or migraine frequency is reduced by as much as 80%. Wow. And no drug so far can do that. And even acutely, we're looking also at exogenous ketones, what they can do for a migraine patient. And it looks like if you catch the migraine very, very early, before the pain phase has started, you can stop the attack from happening by just taking exogenous ketones as kind of a way to mitigate that arousing or that happening um, energy deficit very quickly. That's and then, amazing. And then we also know that a lot of other, yeah, sorry. Can, no, I'm just seeing it, can you guys hear us okay? It's a little loud, we're at the Metabolic Health Summit with Dr. Ilana Gross, super excited to learn about this. So if I could paraphrase what you were saying, with regards to the onset of a migraine, it's the yep. energy deficit and concomitant upregulation and oxidative stress. Yes, so oxidative stress also causes an energy deficit down the road. So mm. it's kind of two sides of the same coin. Sure. And we have other mechanisms that we know play a role in migraine, such as, for example, inflammation is increased, a migraine brain is hyper excitable. So the type of person that gets epilepsy or migraines has a genetic um, predisposition to a hyper-excitable brain, which then also uh, means that uh, some some brain that is uh, firing more obviously needs more energy. Wow. So a brain that doesn't shut off, uh, usually a brain codes for change. So when you look at a checkerboard, a white, a white wall, or some a stimulus that is constant all the time, a healthy person habituates to that, meaning the brain stops firing. A migraine person's brain fires constantly irrespective of whether there's a change or not, which means that the migraine brain naturally is more energy demanding and is probably going to run that energy crisis more often than a healthy person's brain. And, um, you come in. For some people, a low-carb diet is enough to, to uh, ensure that the brain is not running out of energy it's because we know that the brain is a very protected organ by the blood-brain barrier, so it creates a very unique metabolic um, state because long Fatty acid, fatty acids, long chain fatty acids or proteins cannot get into the brain. So the brain is dependent on very small energy metabolites like glucose, ketone bodies or lactate to survive. So it's much more likely to run into an energy crisis because it cannot just access the pest or metabolize some muscles as other tissues can. 
so amazing. And the last thing I want to say is that ketones are an efficient, a more efficient metabolite, but what they can also do is they reduce inflammation, they reduce hyperexcitability of the brain, they're potent antioxidants themselves, they produce less oxidative stress when they are burned, and they have a lot of other mechanisms like increasing glucose transporters so more glucose can get into the brain, increasing mitochondrial bi biogenesis, so more powerhouses to potentially make more energy. So you have a lot of other potentially migraine protective effects that you get when you're in ketosis, whether that is endogenous or potentially also exogenous to some extent. And uh, so this is what metabolic therapies yeah. can do for your headaches. This is so exciting, guys. This is the type of content that we're learning here today at the Metabolic Health Summit. If you know someone that suffers from headaches or migraines, please hit that like button, share this video with them, and definitely check out Dr. Alana. You're found on Facebook as well, and you yes. have social yes, media. Yes, I'm on Facebook, I'm on Twitter, and I post some study results or whatever. I sometimes make some new videos, so if you have nice. some questions, um, you gotta I do a video, move, a longer move, video. A longer YouTube video or whatever, <laughs> yeah. right? Okay, so, Thank yeah. you so much. Thank this was watching. absolutely amazing. Thanks for tuning in, guys. Bye-bye.